let's talk about what is the ideal position. If you have to look at these two milestones, one is harmonized portfolio investments and the second is a 10% segregation between foreign in from portfolio investment and FTI, how would you go about doing it? You're still yeah. missing FPCI. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> it's an important no, if you if you you know just take the 10 percent cutoff and if you look uh, hypothetically you say everything below 10 is portfolio above 10 is fdi right. if you look at that and then you bunch all classes of investors which means that there is no fii no qfi nri it's everybody globally yeah. uh, that's that that's that's you know you're opening and that's like I, I, I think that's like capital account convertibility. It's opening up, which is which will be a, is a major step. I don't know if that's what's been and intended. Is it what be, isn't, hasn't that already happened for all the automatic route? So I, that's what I'm saying. Not stock exchange in a manufacturing concern, which is listed or whatever. And if the resolution is passed, 100% hmm. FI can, can come be done. Yeah. 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 So, so, so 100% FI has come, but for QFIs you got another limit. But for FIs you don't have. Yes. FII you can go up to 100% when yeah. this NRI you can't go more than 24%. You're not even permitted with a resolution. With a resolution you can go only up to 24%. So I think for all categories of portfolio investors, you should allow the same kind of rules the same kind of leeway. So that's exactly what I'm saying. For instance, let's take steel. You can go yeah. all the way up to 100% yes, in steel absolutely. automatic, yes, right? Yes, yes. Uh, so in steel, if you had one portfolio route, mm. okay, is there a cap on portfolio investment in steel? No, 100%. Right? So with, with resolution, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. With resolution, 100%. 100%. Yeah. So typically, there is 100% open for so foreign So why limit a QFI or why, why limit, limit, why QFI limit QFI anybody? Yeah. So I therefore, agree. there's yeah. a case like for adding all these together for the automatic route 100% FDI cases. So where we get stuck is only in those sectors where Do you where need a resolution a or not? The yeah, committee and you just committee says that why, why are you restricting this protectionism? Yeah. You should open it up. So now we're only stuck with what happens yeah. to those sectors which have sectoral caps. In that case, yeah. if you have one common portfolio investment route, then how do you deal with the reduced space for different portfolio exactly. investors? Is yeah. that your worry? That's, that's the only worry. That's right. No, I think, I think philosophically, uh, portfolio investment should be separate from foreign direct investment and you should not club it because uh, FDI is meant for control and strategic industries. So if you are a portfolio investor and it's portfolio investments, I don't think the restriction should apply. The, the view position. is that portfolio investment is, is without control and therefore the money is welcome. Hmm. There is no control and therefore you could be free to open it up completely. That's where large FDI will come in. That's why large foreign investment. For large foreign investment. For large foreign investment. We're tripping over lots of acronyms here. Foreign investment. That would work only if you if you're still treating portfolio investment as investment on the stock exchanges, right? If you go back to the committee report, it says ten percent, whether listed or unlisted. I tend to agree with you. Actually. If it is portfolio, it should literally be on this exchange. Yes. yes. This share, unlisted uh, portfolio share, is not matching to my I, mind. I slightly yeah. differ. A share is a portfolio. share. A share is a share. Whether you take it from the exchange or you take it directly. So when, you as long as you, when you do it directly, you don't, you're getting into the an agreement, the joint venture agreement. No, no. The principle yeah. is exactly. control versus no control. And if you're a portfolio investor and you don't have control, whether you take it directly, indirectly, I believe even today for the FIIs, they're not allowed to do secondary transactions outside the exchange. Yeah. But well, I think I allow it. Uh, allow it. Create, right? I, have yeah. I have a question. I have a question. You lost me there. They will be controlled. Yeah, sorry. Yes. So yeah, when you said control. portfolio investment must invest only on the exchange, yeah. that's when you're talking about purchasing listed equity. You're yes, saying there should be no purchase of listed equity off exchange for portfolio investors. That's right. But what happens to unlisted equity? Should portfolio investors be allowed to invest in unlisted equity? It should all be FDI. Treated as FDI. That should be treated as FDI. See, that's the current classification. See, let's go back to the basics. Right? FDI. Currently, anything when you're doing it uh, with listed securities, mm -hmm. pri primarily where there's no control, mm -hmm. is your po definition of portfolio investment. Mm -hmm. If you're doing a pipe where it's a listed company but you're doing a private transaction, that's still in your FDI category, right? Now, when you start saying that. Ten, anything that you're buying 10% as hmm. an individual, whether listed or unlisted, I treat that as portfolio investment. You're rewriting the laws in India. So Literally. everything in uh, every investment in unlisted, whether it's portfolio or foreign direct or strategic or 
or private equity should all be considered FDI. No, I, is I, that I, what you're saying? Uh, yeah. No, no. What, what I, I mean, you just said that, right? Yes. I don't I don't Mr. Chidambaram has said in the budget. I don't exactly. Although he's used the wrong about. word FII, I don't sorry, uh, instead of portfolio. portfolio. Right. But he yeah. said anything less than 10 yeah. will be considered FII. I think FII. That's, that's where it's clarity on the classification. But I think, was yeah. he talking about unlisted at all? He didn't say. I think he might have but been restricting no himself no, to listed. There is no controversy on the listed part. What would you like to see happen? Given that we've jumped through so many different hoops now. Let me start with what would you like to see happen? You go first, Pratibha, I'll go. Um, uh, sure. on I would like to see uh, the QFI and the FI regime to be merged, made very much simple, KYC rules made much, much simpler. That's like I think the biggest pain point. And if you're going to include the NRIs in that route, include, uh, increase the limits. Right. Okay. Don't don't restrict them. Keep the FVCI separate. Very very and create important. Separate limits for FVCI or club FVCI and the FVCI FBI. regime was perfectly fine as it was without the nine sector restrictions. You know, without uh, the uh, the. But the, would the, FVCI be counted as FDI? No, it's it's a separate category. Now I think the problem was uh, so that RBI in a sector with a FDI sectoral cap of forty nine percent would and. 5% FVCI investment be counted as part of the 49% or over and above the 49%? It would be counted towards the 49%. Towards the 49%. Yeah. So it is counted towards the sectoral cap. You can count it towards the sectoral cap. I'm happy with that. So you're qualitatively not clubbing it with FDI. You're because quantitatively the clubbing it for the uh, restrictions ah. that are applicable, Lovely. right? Because I've not even gotten into pricing guidelines. Your, your, your private equity investors have a, a medium term view. They need an exit option and you can that you can restrict the entry you can put in restrictions okay. to make sure fdi car doesn't come through fvci route it could be a pooling vehicle you can try, you know uh, tighten your kyc at that route but i think it's an important route ajay what would you like to see happen no i i think the word i would like to see is that the uh, rules are the same for all categories of portfolio investors. They should be which includes uh, NRI, which includes NRI. So NRI, indivi foreign individuals, foreign corporations, foreign. They, they should have the same rules because if okay. you consider portfolio, I don't think there is merit in trying to create some differential treatment for them, including the FVCI or not. Y including. Okay, but what about limits? Investment limits should they be common for all? There is merit in broad basing categories and having uh, separate limits because they, then you have separate categories who can come and there's less. Uh, crowding out impact. Vivek, last word to you. I would like, of course, complete uh, uh, ease of registration and investment. Okay, so there we're all on we're, the same, we're, we're yeah, on the yeah, same page. I believe that if it is called a portfolio investment, then there should be no limit on cumulatively where it goes to. And that should be left to shareholders. That should be left. Well, to shareholders. It could be left to shareholders. But that would only limit. apply to those sectors which, don't, which we don't have yeah. FDI caps in. That's right. right? So, yeah. so the ones with okay. there's no FDI cap, I believe these sub limits don't make sense. They yeah. should be fully opened up. In sectoral caps, I guess it's for the uh, sensitivity of each sector. They have to decide how they want to deal. In with sectoral it. caps, what you're pushing for is that the portfolio investment limit should be exclusive from the FDI I, limit. I believe it should, and be that exclusive. we should have a different dispensation for and, FVCI and as I well. Would, I would say for listed companies, for companies yeah. where there is an so F now sectoral you're creating a cap. Subcategory. No, no, but that's already listed there. Listed companies already there. in sectors with sectoral caps. Listed companies with sectors which have sectoral caps in the market, you should not restrict. FII or these QFI investments. Can I just sum it up? It shouldn't. So you need to be able to get get place, play in the market. Okay, sure. There's no easy answer, right? Of course not. <laughs> what, <laughs> which is why this is so what, fun. What UK Sina committee report was looking for was, you know, making it easy. I think until and unless India is ready for opening up, not having, you know, protection for our domestic corporates, not having this fear of, you know, takeover by foreign corporates. No, no, Hot I, money I'm coming one in point on that before I say, uh, I, the only point I say is make it a level playing field. Streamline how many regulators you have to go for for the same thing. Today what happens is, FIPB also talk, no, starts no, no, talking that's about that's portfolio that. investments. They do. So if there is a portfolio investment happening, there are often times when you still have to go to FIPB for clarification. You know, keep it completely separate. Let's say we deal with that, then FIPB deal with this. Very, very important. I think that's where the real pain is. You want somebody to be decisive or decisive regulator, which is appealable. <laughs> uh, I was going to come to that. Yeah. We haven't had the appellate authority. I'm all for the appellate authority. 
on this uh, I started by topic. saying this is a bit of a dream mm -hmm. and I'm going to conclude by saying this sounds like a bit of a dream but I hope we've given you an idea of the complexity that these two committees will be dealing with and hence what you should be prepared for when those reports finally come out. With that, thank you to all three of you for joining me today. We'll have several more conversations on this in the course of the next few months and of course when the reports are finally out so make sure you stay tuned to the firm. We'll be back next week.